Oh, so we just like, got the player handbook? It's look? basically anything in the player's handbook is for sale if here. If we have the money? Yeah, at those prices. So yeah. it's very important. Oftentimes, you'll have places that sell stuff, but it'll be more expensive. This very affordable. This right. is this is about the best shopping our, in the multiverse. Potions of healing. Yep. 50 gold pieces each. How many gold but pieces? these are branded Ravnica potions of healing, so you can get them in three different styles. They have a they have a quick quick draw that kind of comes with a lanyard. They've got like a more traditional pouch based potion of healing, and then they've got the hippie potion of healing, which tastes like weeds. We know which one Brian's getting. Or just weeds. Patchouli? Yes. It tastes like patchouli? Um, it smells like patchouli. So how much money do we have left if they took some out of my bag? I think, uh, Lance, let's do a quick uh, financial accounting. You bet a thousand of his gold, but then one of no, back. No, no, Well, 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 I bet. Okay. I don't know. Gold came out of the, the bag of holding. I don't holding. know what they bet. How much came out of the bag of holding? Uh, Did it all go back? I had 300. Okay. So I can tell you. I bet 200 on our barbarian to win at 10 to 1. Right. Stop. I bet 100 on the on Minos <laughs> to win at 1 to 1. Right. Which these odds don't make sense. Don't make sense. Don't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. I should have done it. Uh, <laughs> it's fantastic. Win. I times, did the one publicly. Yes. Everybody saw me bet on the noble to win. And then I collected the money through. Um, and then you paid back what was what was owed to the bag of holding? I didn't bet. Hey. No, but I had you bet for me. So what I asked out the same Like, 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 like yeah, I don't know what kind of goal. I mean, I don't feel like I've been paid in a long time. <laughs> okay, so all the so you have received gold from completing your heists. Okay. The, the one heist you got, two heists you got a magic item, and two heists you got about three hundred gold. Yeah. He's so also got, stolen. I've stolen four thousand. I have like 4, almost five thousand gold. gold in my. So the party, part. I, and I would consider that party gold, but he considers it his. No, I I say it's mine. <laughs> but if somebody's like, I need gold for this, mm -hmm. yeah, I would yeah, get. Yeah. But it's in my bag of holding. So like, it's yours. But you would like if yeah, if I would have been here and Lance would have been like, Yo, can I have three hundred go out of your? Yeah. I would have been like here. Like not, no, it's my but so but I do have we the party are, we have a shit ton of money right now. So. Well, not a shit ton when you start looking at the price of magic. Yeah, items. I know, but <laughs> can I go to the black market? Yes, there is a black market. You have made connections within the black market because you are hanging out with goblins trying to get information on Cranko, and Cranko is an underworld boss, right? So he runs these kinds of things. So you've Who? got Cranko, 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 the goblin boss, Cranko. What is it? Canerco? Canerco. That's his twin. I just want like a walking down. So, so you're good with your academic for tomorrow. You're going to have him try to break into the, break the security of the cataloging somehow. You're going to work with your mentor to come up with other options and continue your research into justification for this kind of fringe belief. While he's doing his big shopping spree, okay. can I ask him to get me... Uh, forged forklift certification. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we you want to? You want to? You want to be forklift? He could probably purchase that you know, for you yeah, on the black market. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Then I'll have some leather, right? Yeah. Have leather. Yeah. 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 And then you know, Lance, are you shopping for anything in particular? Why do I have leather? So is it because things are out of the Okay. Okay. So, so everybody probably wants two healing potions. No, you can wear. Is there anyone that doesn't want to spend a hundred gold on two healing potions? Yes. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. So. Plus so Brian, everyone's spending a hundred personal gold on two healing potions. Scale. So everyone now has two scale. healing potions. Yeah, you can get. Scale. Everybody has two healing potions. You spend a hundred of your personal gold. So you had about three hundred personal gold. You spent a hundred of that on, to give to Lance to get you healing potions. Okay. So I just take it down. Yeah. I still have. So you still have like. How much is a I'm not sure. That's all in the DMG, I think. I got two healing potions. The magic item prices I thought it was in player's okay. handbook. All right. It should be. Yeah, play, check play temple. Right there. Can I use your player temple? Uh, Rock? Yeah, of course. Thank you, man. Uh, anyway, healing potions. Uh, hat of wizardry. How much is that going to run? I don't know. How much do you, you want? I didn't half play it. I didn't, I didn't but will it slow down my day? No. And how much? Well, it... it well, if you don't want to affect your stealth, you want breastplate. And what does that do? It gives you 14 plus dex. You don't want that. How much money is this going to have? So Lance has 4,000 gold for so the one party, and then you each have about 200 left. Okay. 200. You don't get disadvantage on stealth rolls, okay. and you get your full dex modifier. So you get 16. 
Do you have a shield as well? Yes. So that should be an 18 armor. But actually, my dexterity is 20. So what would it be? 19? So what's your final? The Dungeon Master's guy that has the magic item. Actually, it's studded. You want to do studded. Yeah. So you can get one better. Your armor class would be... So Hat of Wizardry is in Xanathar's. You would have a 21 armor class. So I'll just do that. Five, five, six, seven. No, you'd have 19. How do you have 20 armor class? Well, because I would did it for that. So what would I have? Let me... Actually, you're going to have... Oh my God. Either way. Actually, no, you want this one right here. So instead of there, so plus dex, that's 17. Plus two for the shield. Plus two for the shield. That's you have 19. 19. Okay. Mm. And then I did... 136. Do you have anything else? Do you, do you have like defensive? Yes, I'm, d I'm a defensive fighter. That's what it was. And if you have defensive fighter, I think that's too. I, I chose the defensive fighter. Well, these things are expensive, man. <laughs> I'll take down my. You all sign at the end when we start this game. You just don't know it. Thank you. Do you want to help me look stuff you get up? Plus yeah, one D sure. armor class, so you have twenty. So I was right. I have twenty. But well, you, your armor is not leather. I'm not finding the price leather. of the house. Hat of wizardry. Your armor is not leather. Hat of wizardry. It's supposed put, to be in here. So. Hat of wizardry. Wondrous item common. Are no wondrous items have a, no. a cost? So I got studded leather. It doesn't. It shouldn't matter if it's like armor, weapon, wondrous item. Really have that. It, it should all just. Be also, I got a, oh, I got a common, protection. uncommon, so I'm, rare. How does magic item? Is that a plus one? How does magic item pricing work? Like a wondrous item. <laughs> <laughs> right. It does wondrous a certain day. There's a little chart in the DM page for how much it is. The chart is for common magic items, it's 100. For uncommons, it's 1,000. Okay. So it's a, nice. and wondrous, wondrous is uncommon? Or wondrous? It should say on the and item what it is. Wondrous. Items. Yeah, I put that wondrous, there. Wondrous, but what rarity is all, wondrous? Just to let it know. So I got 21 on the class. D&D will calculate that all for you, though. Yeah, I'll Hat. put it all there. Hat oh, of Wizardry. Hat of Wizardry. Common. So that's so that's it's only 100 gold for the Hat of Wizardry. That's sweet. So it's, wait, so tell me again, Cody. It's 100 for Common. Yeah, but why did 1,000 for Uncommon. Because you can only 5, get a max bonus of 2 rare, from your dexterity. 50,000 for Very Rare. And you get a 500,000 for Legendary. Yeah, so no, and there's no price on that. Thank, thank you, Cody. Cody. Those numbers, like, <laughs> that's why when he said I changed your duel, I'm like, I accept. You got it? Did that make sense, Lance? Um, common is a hundred, uncommon is a thousand, rare is five thousand. Yeah, I bought studded leather. Mm. Studded leather. Studded leather. Studded leather is only forty-five gold. I took magic or unmagic? Okay, how much does it matter? So that's the thing. If you, if you get studded leather plus one, yeah. which is a common magic item, it's only a hundred. I'll do that then. I think. Yeah, right. You get plus one more. Yep. So my armor class is it a hundred forty-five or just a hundred? Here's the M. It's just a hundred. All right. Then here in Ravnica, it's just a hundred. So it's plus one said, but that counts as your plus one item. Yeah. Okay. I don't have another plus one. I just have, you have two. What are two magic items? Two magic items. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can buy a magic item, and you you get one on. Yeah, yeah. And you can buy. Well, I have three now total. Okay. We got the two uncommon, and I just bought the plus one. Okay. So, that's, that's perfect. But I'm, I'm perfect. I can't get anything else because I have to drop something. Drop. Right. Three attunement slots. No, no. I think you only get two attunement slots, but you don't have to tune to armor. Oh, okay, then I'm good. Ceiling. Ceiling. All right. Do you have any magic items you want to buy? Big stretch in Barovia. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, in the black market, okay, the black market you're I'll easy to find it. certificates uh, and permission slips and any kind of, uh, you know, you want to be a lawyer, they'll sell you a bar. I mean, they'll have everything. All right, so I need, first up, I need a forklift certification. There's three levels of forklift certification. I, need I have a 22 armor class. class. Uh, just just one juryman and expert and novice. <laughs> I just need to be able to use it independently. Novice, novice, novice forklift uh, license is a hundred gold. I'll take the cheapest one. That's a hundred gold. Oh, okay. And then it's coming out of your pocket. Can I, can I have a hundred gold? Sure. Thank He's now a novice forklift operator. Okay, I have now. Write that on your character sheet. <laughs> That's gonna come up for sure. <laughs> there, I, I gave it to him. I took it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you're able to get that. Are you shopping for other magic items? I'm just looking around and seeing what piques my interest. Really. Okay, I'm going to give you a complication. I'm ready for my duel. <laughs> All right, we'll duel. We'll duel here in just a sec. Yeah, see what you can get, man. Hopefully, you roll good. What is he going to need? Is he going to need a roll? Wait, it's a it's a page 123. David, if we want. 
for the heist when we were breaking into the prison, if we wanted to go in as like pastors or something, which I could pass as, yes, would I need any certifications for that or anything at all to make it like, seem legit? No. <laughs> Just say you're here to do construction of your forklift certification. Like it's not my fault the forklift ain't here, but I'm here. Just let me in, bro. I'll just... Coming soon. Don't worry, it's, before, it's after your time. <laughs> Magic item purchase complication, D12. That's a 10. It's the one that looks like the D20. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> one. One? Oh, you're not going to believe this. Your, um... Forklift operator there permit go. is a forge well, yeah, planted by an enemy. Um, Try that. An enemy? An enemy. I think you got it. Okay, but I didn't. I didn't you even go. It. He's <laughs> the one that went. You and got purchased it. a fake. Yeah, and it was buried. It was tricky. Cool. Forged permit. Not for me. So not my man. money. Not my problem. Okay. <laughs> Lance, why don't you roll a D12 for your <laughs> magic <laughs> item purchasing <laughs> complications? <laughs> But we're not doing black market. No, no, he's in the regular magic item purchasing complication. No. Would I have to do that too? Since I bought. So no, you're not spending the whole day shopping. You just no, walk in. I, walk yeah, out. it walked out. A nine? <laughs> a nine? I did grab him. Uh oh. When you pull out that hat of wizardry, there's like a nine year old child with her dad. And she's like, Dad, you said I could have the hat of wizardry. And he offers twice as much gold, 200 gold, for the hat you were planning to purchase. To me? No. <laughs> to the vendor. So the price is now doubled. You're a thief. There's only one, one hat, hat of wizardry. I'm sorry. I'm not a thief. All right, we'll kill the father and son. <laughs> I, uh... Was Who I, would you kill first? Was I in there when Which one happened? would have to watch no. the other one die? Because <laughs> I would say, I have He'd gone solo shopping with the personal shoppers. Yeah. You, you could go, you could go yeah, the Muslim route, just yeah. <laughs> But which one would wear the best? Right what? What do you mean you would be wearing the best? Oh, I That's would die best. and I would kill both of them. Yes. Along with everybody on that block. That's the Muslim route. What? <laughs> oh my god. And that's why you stay on 4chan, kids. <laughs> <laughs> the people are moving to 4chan left and right. No one's going on Reddit anymore. They say that, and then Reddit's not going to change like they no, think, and they'll be back. Uh, touch grass. Um, okay. Would you like to purchase the hat still, or are you going to let it go to the higher bidder? Maybe. The child will let me buy it if I show him some. Cool pyrotechnics. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> are you going intimidation? Press the digitation. What, is it intimidating? It's not intimidating. What is it? Uh, well, I would say, you know, some of these hats are defective. Oh. Case, Luff. <laughs> Luff check, D20. Deception. <laughs> this one's just a prop. That's deception, right? Not yeah, persuasion. Deception. So I, gotta, I wanna make my first, uh, how do I gotta do that in this thing? Oh, he's using the D&D Beyond die roller. Uh, yeah. Just on click on the, the Click on the thing. On the which thing? Lower right-hand corner. What does a hat of wizardry do? Oh, this thing? <laughs> but don't I get pluses and stuff like well, that? What are you, It'll what's fact, the stat? No, click on the stat. Click on your uh, deception check. Um, Down at the bottom. This one? Nope. No, no, There's no. a button somewhere. You mean up here? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, skills. There you go. Oh. Anybody want skills. any jelly beans? And there's deception? Good there. Right. Oh god, I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Deception yeah. sucks. What'd you get? Uh, All right. right. D20. I should have I should have done something else. Okay. So roll on with the plus, the plus number. Right. There you go. There you go. 19 plus 1. 19. 19. Is that the way to do it? 19 plus 1? Yeah, that's how you do it. Yeah, you got a 20. You got a 20. <laughs> She's like, you know you're I've right, Daddy, I don't want this hat. I want a different hat. I want a better hat, Daddy. <laughs> and they walk on. So you're able to purchase the hat for 100 gold. Sweet. Brian. What's your class again? Veraska returns with you to your mud hut. She's impressed. What about my, um, 
Mud hut. Scarecrow is she like impossible? Like she thinks the overall architecture is beautiful. It blends well, but most importantly, it reflects your spiritual strength, which is impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> that was great. She's into it. <laughs> which is impressive. <laughs> that was a great. <laughs> Let's not answer the question. <laughs> but it's impressive. So it gives you a good compliment, too. So you're just like, you're damn right. Let's move on. <laughs> it's impressive. And you better recognize which you do. Oh, no, she does. Oh, uh, the she impressiveness does. of yeah. my impressive. <laughs> of your hut. Your mud uh, hut. The, by the mud hut, she means the doorway, the windows. And it's nicer than, you know, that. And I want to say Yoda was Golgari. Right. Or at least he converted Golgari. Okay. Because you want to know what he started off as? A toad? You suck. Remember the High Council of the Jedi. And thus, probably Azori Senna. Zoria Senna. They are kind of assholes. And I think he converted. He realized the, the, the failure of his ways. I'm, I'm not sure who this Yoda is, but he sounds like a great ally. Green guy, did magic, lived in a hut. Sounds like half the people I know. <laughs> big ears. Oh, not the only thing that was big. <laughs> his reputation preceded him, if you know what I mean. Well, as does yours. I mean, it is an honor to have you doing this project here. Of course. First of all, I want your blessing for my amazing temple. She starts taking off her robe. <laughs> that is exactly the kind of blessing I'm looking for. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And I go... <laughs> That he rolls on his back. He does that thing where he flops on his back. And yeah, that's exactly. So now we're going to flash forward to the morning. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to skip this part. Have you, you ever seen, oh, actually, time out. Have you seen You're D &D? feeling? No, wait, time out. D&D &D on community. <laughs> You're feeling. Where she's like. <laughs> You're feeling a little stone. Do you know what scene I'm talking about? You're feeling a little stone. After the well endowed. That was a long time ago. I don't remember that. It's been taken off. Someone was telling us here that that community episode is because of the black you, got, you can find it. It's out there. But it's been... But it's racist. Yeah, it's racist. Well, I mean, he's... d and D's racist. Um, but when you wake up, you are feeling a little bit stoned. You know, actually, she's like this, and then like this. <laughs> you think... And then, and then we cuddle for the appropriate amount of time. You think that the cuddling period may... Her medusa -ness? Even though she's trying not to, but in her lapses, she may have slightly stoned you. So you're feeling a little stoned. Like literally, parts of your anatomy are turning into rock. Does, does, does she, is she, no, it's not Medusa. Is she? she has Medusa powers. Wait, wait, wait. You need to You don't mean like What's her name again? Bros Broska. Apparently, Rock Hard. Dude. Rock Hard. <laughs> Which part of me did she turn into rock hard? Like the edges. <laughs> Just the tip. <laughs> it hangs lower now because the tip's heavier. <laughs> she 100% has Medusa abilities. She turns them into treasure. She's got snake hair, man. But she also, I mean, she's almost... Yeah, but, hey, you but, just but, Medusa. but only on the top. But only on the top. Well, she's oh, almost Firaxi because she's part mechanical. Too. So, um, oh, dang. as dang you're waking up, you hear preparation oh, yeah. for a duel taking place outside of your new area, Brian. And you realize this may be a chance to really bring some prominence. The first duel, maybe your temple can be a dueling site for all of Ravnica, a place of honor and death. Death, maybe Zoltek. not honor. Zoltek. Zoltek. Okay, but they're, they're posting up. You're posting up oh, against yeah. a... a uh, dead Describe man. this man. No, oh, he's dead. Okay, he is carrying a musket to the duel. His second hands you a musket. Okay. Ten paces, turn and fire. Sure. All right, ten paces. Are you going to shoot at him or are you going to shoot over his head? I'm going to shoot at him. Dead center mass. Are we, are we, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, what about 10 minutes into it? Right? Well, I'd be at the door. I'd be at the door. So you shoot him and the bullet stops and falls an inch from him. But it was dead on. The bullet coming to you is also dead on, and an inch away from you, it turns into a piece of paper and falls to the ground. The paper has writing on it. 
I like figured out where it is. It's got an address. I just put it in my pocket. Okay. And I hand back the pistol to. Okay, okay so you. Actually. If they don't ask for the pistol, I keep, keep the pistol. If they ask, I'll give it back. You have the pistol. You. All right. yes. you can keep the pistol. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go around the table one more time, and everyone's gonna do their last pitch for additional renown, and then we're gonna start the next Golden Vault heist. Okay, so okay, do you find out anything about? That? I'll start heading to go find that stuff out. You find a junkie, like straight up junkie, like with prison tats that's working in the cataloging department that you're pretty sure you could turn quickly to get this book into the library. I'll do it. I'm gonna have you give me a D20 deception roll. You can, uh, you'll give him advantage. So roll two D20s. Two D20s. Yeah, and this is pretty easy. You you own this guy. I mean, you saw him right away. Like just pinprick eyeballs the whole thing. Sounds like um, one of my main stakeholders at work. Seven, Any pluses? Um, what would be what would be a plus? What was the wrong on your on your character sheet? Deception. Deception. It's a per charisma based stat. This might be bad. What was my? I forgot to do it down. But what was my renown on the thief guild? We should also have like all your skills. I think you were twelve, right? No, thieves guild. He was like twelve. I thought he was twelve. Okay. One away from the next one. Charisma. Okay, twelve. You look up at the giant like so two, like third level. Two so it's a nine. Um, he comes rolling in with the book, mm -hmm. and the guy, you can, he thinks he's a narc. Yeah. For sure. Is there a way I can convince him? He starts giving him the book. It looks like a little gold might help out here, because right. this is not gold. I'll going slide well. him. How much you slide him? Ten? Ten gold, okay. So yeah, you give him the book, you give him ten gold, he takes the book back to the cattling department, that's the last you see him. You also get one more academic point for spending a night on a couple days with this renowned scholar who has taught you a lot. So you get two, you get another one for your criminal because you turned this guy so quickly, and, and for the criminal. duel. And for the? What? And for the duel. You, you basically won the duel. It was a duel of honor, but you got information on the Demir. Right. Brian, temple construction in two weeks is way ahead of schedule. You are going to have to pay, unfortunately, 400 gold for basic shakedown. There's there's unions, there's organizations that need money to keep your building. Is there building anything site. else above and beyond that that I need to pay? Well, you can throw a party for the workers. Do I still need to do the shakedown? No, that would just build morale for your workforce and complete the project sooner. The shakedown is a requirement in Ravnica. So I'm going to do both. Okay, so that's 800 gold. For a rip roaring party, get everybody drunk. The goblins come; they're providing you site security now. They've heard that you're offering dueling services. You've got a waiting list of people that want to be dueling at dawn. You're going to start offering midnight duels. Is there any other time? I don't well, know. The duels start at eleven, but that's like the, the, the pre card. Yeah. Mid card, midnight. You know, so you, it really doesn't start kicking until you one. think you're actually going to be able to turn this into. A, right now, you're doing it for free. But you're pretty sure you could turn this into a pretty profitable venture once everything comes together. Of course. Okay, so eight. But not only do they come to duel, I mean, they come to duel, they want to fight, they want the bloodlust. But you know the ultimate reason we're doing this, though, is knowledge and acclaim and, you know, just the temple. Correct. For Right, yeah, And you do gain one more renown point. Yeah. So I think you're at, like, 23. I mean, you're almost at the top. I mean, do I get one for giving them Zoltan? They do. Do I get one for giving them the damn gold? No. <laughs> <laughs> you said Fantasy eight. shopping went great. You got whatever I got you wanted. Stuff. I got okay. Yeah. Does anyone uh, want any stuff? Don't mind telling me stuff. Uh, you, you were also you had signed up for some summer re, summer program, summer <laughs> like an acting stuff. class at wizardry school. Yeah. You wanted to learn master some ranger stuff and some. How did that go? It was, I mean, it was great. It was yeah. great. Yeah, I got I got many. Cantrips and first level spells. Oh, right. What what you really made is contact with the staff because they all recognized your nobility, and they all realized that private training for the rich and famous. Yeah, yeah. You tried to, but it was, you know, it's just obvious, right? So you're gonna get one more renown point in nobility, and then uh, whatever your re character rebranding that works fine well. Okay, so whatever you were trying to do there, that does work. And one of these professor, one of these uh, instructors that you were using is desperate to have you hire them as like kind of like a personal trainer or like that kind of thing and so is available if you ever need them 
Like Mickey? A, from a henchman, yeah. yeah. Well, that's <laughs> kind of Mickey from who? Oh, like a henchman. A henchman. Oh, I thought he was like a personal Matt, trainer, like, like, like Mickey. Like, I, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. They, they are a personal Air trainer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But they, they're doing it because they know you're rich, right? And they just want an easy job. Is basically well, what they're trying to do. And you see right through them. Oh, man. Oh, Rock, did we do all your research? You good? You got the book put away. You got your now point. I'm not so psyched about the manner, but you know what? I think it'll come out to help us. It was under circumstances. Right. The other thing is you're... No worries. You, you are starting to realize that... resurrect them as zombies. Like a lot of the kind of texts, legal precedent that would justify this kind of stuff, it looks like there might be a gap in the library. Like, perhaps someone's been removing material or not giving you access. You're not finding simple, like, the, the discussions of what are at stake. Like, the principle, the foundational principle documents are just not there. And that strikes you as a little bit odd. In fact, one of the things you're learning in the Azuri's library is it's very, like, orthodox. Like, it only proves their points. And there's not a lot of wiggle room anywhere in the library. Like, you start expanding, your, you know, like, what do they have on, like, eating dietary restrictions? And it's just everything on their side and nothing on any of the other possible positions. Yeah. It's like Makes you a little uncomfortable. Opinions and yeah. Yeah. Conspicuous. Right. And you're, you're starting to see Brian's point of view a little bit. These Azorius guys are kind of assholes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam? Yes. I want to go to church. No one listens yes. to them anyway. You though. show up at the mortician. He's excited to have you. He's got some really good ideas for marketing. He's got two funerals today that he would love to have you, you know, show your stuff again. Do what you did yesterday. All right. Roll on the complications table. All right, that's four, yeah. I'm guessing. You, you uh, you what kind of complication are we talking about here? This is a, a religious ceremony complication. Hold on. Work complication. D6. D6, okay. Two. Uh, okay. Don't make me it again. It turns out that this guy is experiencing tremendous financial difficulties. And at the end of a hard day's work where you leave two cheese it filled funerals, he's unable to pay you. That's fine. Okay. I wasn't expecting payment. All right. Excellent. Your renown does go up one more. Do I have another time great to, day? Do I have time to go to that address on the, the thing? Not today. We'll, we'll be back in Ravnica after our next heist. So what's the best kind of armor I should have for this? Uh, perusing in the in the uh, black market area, buying information, buying stuff, making connections. Anything else you want to do? So, well, Okay, yeah, you, you, you would, I asked if there was anything like special, right? Um, I don't know if anyone else is going Did with you it. say something? <laughs> Nothing <laughs> specific. I mean, what are you looking for? <laughs> something that's just interesting, like I was about. Now no, I'm not looking for anything specific. I'm just well, looking at anything that would be a real attention grabber. There's a guy that's selling random eggs. He thinks in three to five days they'll hatch and you get what you get. What are some of the things that might Some of them look scaly, like they might be dragon eggs. Some of them look like kind of gooey, amorphous beholder blobs. There's a variety of very creepy looking eggs. Is it clear if I feel some of the dragon eggs? No, how this works is you, you give me 200, I give you an egg. The egg chooses the wielder. Oh, investigation or something. Then can't I let the egg choose me and I'll pay for the yeah. egg? Yeah, 200 gold and I'll have the egg choose you. If I pay you the 200 gold and it doesn't like, still choose me, I don't get my gold back. No. I'm here every day. There's a line of people buying eggs that aren't, but you can't. <laughs> I look around me and I'm like, you all get the 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 No, I mean, if you don't want to buy an egg, that's fine. Look, man, I'm just trying to make sure, like, I'm getting an egg that will hatch. Correct, guaranteed. Yeah, that you have my word. Sure, within three to five days. It doesn't change me though. No, there's no guarantee of that whatsoever. I have no idea what's going to come out of this egg. Okay, but here's the thing. I don't need to choose me before I pay you. I can't guarantee that. <laughs> egg hatches, you're on your own. Egg doesn't hatch, bring it back. Now don't ask me. Do I get any sort of refund? New egg. New egg? It'll hatch in three to five days. Alright, cool. What are the color of the dragon eggs? I mean, just, he's gonna randomly select an egg for you. Yeah. 
You don't get to pick, is what he's saying. You give him 200 gold, and then he just turns around and grabs an egg that he says... Yeah, I'll fight that. Okay. Alright, alright. So 200 gold, you have an egg. We'll figure that out in three to five days. A dragon egg, though. I want Everybody knows what the renown is. Everybody's happy at Ravnica. Brian, you've been summoned to the Azorius Senate. I am an Azor, aren't I? Not remember that. You are. You How are. do the summons Does come? Does that make me in polite? Yeah, like, <laughs> um, a page arrives. <laughs> they seem <laughs> subservient and polite. I don't, I don't receive the page. A little worse for wear. You're being summoned from an official calling of the Golden Key. They need you, or the Golden Vault. They need you. They hand you a key, a golden key. Fine. The key is shaped. The key has a shape. I roll my eyes and I'm like, you got to get <laughs> You guys? You're adding the flavor on the, the Ravnica stuff, right? Well, you're supposed to be somewhere. There's the key. All right. I don't know what that looks like. It looks like a circle. Okay. You arrive at the waiting room of the lady who has been sponsoring you in the Azorian Senate. She is sitting with an ancient tattooed dwarf named Varen. Varen Axebreaker. Brian has a key from the Golden Vault. All right. One of you has a Golden Vault. Yeah. That accepts keys. I don't know who has it, but somebody will. That person pulls it out. I have the key. No, Brian has the key. Uh, I guess I'll say I have it in my bag of holding. Pull it out of the bullet bag yeah. of holding. Brian, you put the key in. Stick it in. Sorry. Greetings, operatives. The key dissolves, right? We have discovered the location of a great dwarven treasure, but only a prisoner incarcerated within the prison at Revel's End knows how to access the vault. The quest, should you choose to undertake it, requires you to travel to the prison, infiltrate it, and learn how to access the treasure from the prisoner. Return this information to the dwarf known as Varen Axebreaker, who will brief you on the details of the mission. Good luck, operatives. Thank you for hearing me out, begins Varen Axebreaker. My name is Varen Axebreaker, and I have a proposition for you. My clan has located a wealth stolen from us many years ago, but it's sealed in a vault that's magically locked. If you can recover the key, whatever it is, all you'll gain the undying gratitude of Clan Axebreaker, and I'll cut you in for a percentage of the recovered treasure, of course. The catch here is the person who knows how to open the vault is rotting away in the prison of Revel's End. She's proved very uncooperative with my people in the past, but I recently discovered the vault where she has hid what she's stolen from us. I need you to question her and learn how to open the vault. How you do this is up to you. If you need to spring her from the prison in exchange for this information, please do so. I can provide you with a way in as well as a layout of Revel's End and a few useful tricks. Of course, that a power so receive the briefing. Briefing. Does everyone understand the briefing? Yes. yes. So I feel like we fail in the end game because we don't do enough of the pregame. You know, I feel like you're judging our ability here. I'm Adams. judging your ability. Three and oh. Three and oh, <laughs> I feel like we've done just fine. Three and oh. Okay. If you, okay, three and oh. if you guys are happy, then I'm happy. But yeah, well, I mean, our job is not to make the DM happy, is it? No. The, D, the job is to have a heist. Not a slaughter everybody in a run. Do we get so what Dan, we went in for? Blaine, do you try to make the DM happy all the time? <laughs> Never. No. Never. <laughs> do we get Maybe I should encourage slaughtering everybody. <laughs> yeah, she should. I'm a little... <laughs> That's the my, my, side my point side. is, do we not so get what we're going We've got to integrate the sides of the table. we got the Muslim, the anti-Muslim extremist and the genocidal maniac on this side of the table. And we got you guys shopping and building temples. I was trying to kill somebody. I wanted to buy. Oh, you're, you, can, you're, you have more time. I sped things through. Okay. So while you were no, there, if you want to spend more time. No, we don't have more time. <laughs> I am hearing the shopping is done. Yes. No, no, we just, we just moved forward, but the, what he actually purchased, he hasn't gone through all the bags. I mean, there was a lot of shopping oh, that Julie that. did, you know. And typical shoppers. Julie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> typical Julie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so review the mission briefing. A dwarf, female dwarf, <laughs> stole something from the clan, yep. stuck it in a vault. Yep. Then is now in Revel's End, which is a female. high security prison from the D&D movie. Uh, dwarf. The female dwarf. Female dwarf. Stole from Clan Axe Beak, yeah. Axe Breaker. She's now in jail. Yeah. They found the vault. They need to go get the key or yeah. how to open it. They can't figure out how to open it. They need her to tell them. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, you know what the prison is. You've seen the prison before. The job is to get into the prison and get out with the key. How do we know she has the key? I mean, she she absolutely key. has the key. She won't give it to us. We've known she's had the key forever. How many prison guards are there? Okay, so you've seen this prison from the D&D movie. Oh, okay. So that's Rebel's End. That's exactly where you're going, right? So here's what we can do with you as part of Clan... Uh, we've been scouting this prison for a long time. So first of all, the prison does allow visitors. The prison also allows for people who are lost to stay there for a day or two and they feed them. So oftentimes people wandering in the great north get lost and show up and they will they will house them in the prison with food for a few days. Um, we have access to this supply ship that supplies them, which also transports guards and cooks. We have kidnapped one, two, three, four, five, six, five, four guards and two chefs that we could swap out with you guys. You could pretend to be chefs mm -hmm. or, or guards. You, we could also stick your smaller members. You guys are all relatively small. Some of you tiny-ish, right? We could shove you in crates and put you on the boat and you'd be unloaded when it gets to the prison. The prison, so the prison allows for visitors, so you can go be a visitor. Mm -hmm. When you visit, you generally visit, we visited Prisoner 13. And when he says Prisoner 13, you know something. But we visited her in the past and um, uh, yeah. The warden is generally there, and she You're seems very uncooperative. Mission, go, we can smuggle you in on the ship. You can pretend to be guards, or you could go in and things. You could pretend to be wanderers and be rescued. Um, I have a map of the prison, and she puts an orange-shaped gem on the uh, table, and she moves her hands back, and a light comes up from the orange that is purple and blue or whatever these colors are and it looks like a three-dimensional map Did of the you say prison orange? she sets an orange down it shoots up light that are these colors gotcha then she the orange breaks into its pieces so it like mm -hmm. there's slices of oranges now and she says if you eat these oranges you will have imprinted on your mind the map that you can recollect at any time for the next 10 days I'll take one. So you eat this, and you think of the thing, and you can see a three-dimensional model of the prison. Sweet. These are big. Yeah, I printed one on photo paper. My wife had loaded it in there. I didn't know. And then I ran out of ink after two. <laughs> printed from home? Uh, work? Black and white. <laughs> hey, Rivel's End was from the movie. Correct. He literally said that. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the, the ways to get in, okay, once you get in though, you need access to the prisoner, which is not easy, right? There are a lot of guards in there. It is very secure, right? This prison is no joke. This is the most secure prison ever built. Um, it's extremely cold in the area, so it's difficult to be there. It's a panopticon which makes it difficult. There's great lines of sight. The, the order in the prison is maintained like military precision, right? They don't mess around up there. There's a lot of dangerous people in the prison. And it's not going to be as easy in the movie. I must say, is Arthony going to be there? <laughs> I'll just use Arthony. You, you've already experienced these people. <laughs> they do say that there are tribunals that meet regularly to hear cases. Usually there's only three people on the tribunal about once a year. They assemble a larger tribunal for some of the more um, notorious cases, but that just happened, so we don't expect that to happen for another year. Plus, when that happens, security is usually increased across the board, including on the boats. All right, so what do the people think? Should we... Smuggle you in on a boat, uh, have you be lost wanderers who get held there, or going as a guard, or going as a guard or a chef. Um, I thought there was a third way. Oh, and then just go as a visitor. Go to visit her. Yeah, but... Okay, but so... Be able to what, ask what you know you don't have to ask about this. There's a very notorious gang of some prisoners who's moving yeah, most of the most recent materials to most prisoners. They're like the Phantom. Like, when prisoners get shanked in jail, some chairs are more comfortable than others. Almost self-lock gets killed. Like, this prisoner... You definitely, you definitely don't want... You, does your chair look like that? He said prison for people. Yeah, you don't want those chairs. Like it's my toughest. the biggest um, Mexican like the bottom there, the, the good chair. <laughs> do I tell him this? Or do you I know, you can do whatever you want with that information. He doesn't seem to know this. 
he said it like sh- this was just the name of her as her prison you know, name while she's in prison. I guess I'll tell everybody. Okay. Would I be able to go in as like a pastor, hold a sermon and everything, and like act as act that way as a distraction to try to draw at least minimize the number of guards on active duty or something along those lines? Maybe gather all the prisoners in one place. Could we like maybe dress up as holy warriors? They they do not offer conjugal visits. Are you offering them it's, <laughs> it's um the the area where the prison is, people are often starving to death and dying. You don't have to worry about anything. You know, all your orphans are and they need lost prayer. travelers. <laughs> Lost, there's lo- it's more for like lost travelers. All right, look. Unless it's Vecna or not Vecna. What's her name again? I'll tell. Baraska. Baraska. When he said prisoner thirteen, it's that's essentially like. Would you say like the mafia boss of all mafia bosses? So she's not going to be easy to extort or get information from. And if we piss her off while we're in there, she could have not only the guards but others try to attack us. So this isn't going to be as easy as. Mr. Axie guy. Prisoner 13 runs prisons in other parts of the multiverse. Like, largely considered mythical. When he mentions that she's living there, that's who they want. They, you, you have no interest in talking to her at all. Like, <laughs> very dangerous person. The fact that they're hiring a third level party to go break out of jail get a key from her. No, I think we're into the prison. We have ways to We have ways to just get What's that? Fourth. Done. Fourth level. Fourth level. Sorry. Fourth level. I wonder. With some serious renown. I wonder if I should go talk to her as like a guest to even well, like fill out. Like, on her you might not know who I am, but I'm decent. I'm nowhere near you. Right. But How they want their stuff. We can try to break them out. And if she agrees to that, or if she tells us we if off, then this might be. Yeah, you didn't know she was in prison. I, exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm like. So. And if she is in prison, she probably wants to. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a reason she's there. So. Prisoner transfer. I've met all of you trusting drivers. Like guards, one of us prisoner transfer will make a magical document that. We need Jonathan. Well, my thing is, is with her being so high up. She's there for a reason. Like, if she wanted to be broken out, she'd already be out. Like, that's how powerful she. he's saying she is. Like, she's not going to get out. Yeah. So she's the people that are hiring you don't know this. Yeah. They talk about her like she's a thief that stole their treasure in their mind. But this is like, you think of like. She wants to Pablo be Escobar? So she's living He's a bitch compared to her. Free. Like that's She's how... living in the most secure prison in the universe. And she's still <laughs> running other prisons from it. Like oh, wow. so like I'm thinking my criminal character is thinking like she's there for a reason. So and I'm trying to tell I'm trying to tell the, the axe guy this. Oh also, like, yo, she's there for a reason. Like, no, she's a common criminal. You must have her mistake. There must be lots of people named Prisoner 13. It's a it's a prison. They assign them numbers, I assume. But 13's smart, pretty right? low. Like, she's the 13th prisoner ever? I, that, that was the number that we were given when we went to visit with her. Actually, yeah, Prisoner 13 is kind of an official name. Because, like, how long has she been there? Did she so she robbed she robbed us about three years ago. It took us that long to find the vault. It was well hidden. Well, we're not really sure. Once we found the vault, we were able to deduce who it was who had... You know, she was a trusted member of the Axe Breaker clan. We trusted her. For probably more, more than a year. Really? A year? Mm-hmm. You trust her after I, a year? She must have been more than a year. I mean, she was very well liked. When we learned that it was her betrayal, we were shocked. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Shocked. I tell you. Sorry. She's a trusted agent of Clan Axe Breaker. She betrayed the clan and stole the fortune. <laughs> We think her real name is Corda Glintstone. But she doesn't want to get out. She wants to be in there. But she probably doesn't want anyone to know her real name. <laughs> That's not what people hire in this All right, so... operating other prisons from herself. Uh, How is she doing that? So we, maybe we need to get in there from the other prison. Let's get into a less secure prison and get over into herself from there. You guys are kind of like thinking about what you want to do. Like a pri- you want to be prisoners transferred into Revel's End. Yeah, but if she's the one who's operating other prisoners, other other like how oh, like organized I, crime inside prisons, uh, Mexican she, mafia. So she stuff. has her networks, not like she's like opening portals. And like no, people no, 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 <laughs> no. 
Fuck. And this and this this man speaks something we've never heard. I don't know what he's talking about. She in no way seems like a threatening crime boss. Hence the most. I'll tell you this right now, though. When this is all over, me and you are going to have a lot of conversation. Large, large, sir. Pixar, whatever. I'm mixing up two years. thinking of this But I was thinking about that creature from Monsters, Inc. Large, large is a... You know, she was like the head of the thing. She was the annoying, like... Pee-wee Herman, large, large. Oh, the always watching. That's her. Always watching. Always watching. Roz. Roz. Always. Oh, I so we just have to make a decision about. So do we? Do we understand the mission? Uh, yes. The mission is to go into the prison, get the key, kill, kill the key as many people as possible, <laughs> make sure oh, the prison so burn it down. Don't need to shut it She has the key. They need you to give her the get the key from her. So we don't need to get her out though. You're not sure what the key, they're not. Sure, they've tried every type of uh, dwarven uh, tool that they know of stone breaking. Uh, Oh. It must be some kind of magical They're attunement happy. or something Let's she's done. We we cannot open the vault. Okay. And we, right now, all we need to do is decide how we're going to get in, right? You're sitting at the Azorius Senate planning. So we're all, we have, you have received the heist? Yeah. You have received the heist. The mission briefing is complete. You are now planning the heist. Yeah, can I be researching in the library? Yeah, you, you don't have to go right now, right? The next boat, it takes about three days. We have a agent Jesus. stationed at the dock. It takes about two days to get from the dock to the prison. 27 minutes. Is for the like, can I, yeah, we drew on um, <laughs> like, like, I should have been researching how to, oh, wow. how to do so stuff. I killed him. Oh, Jesus. We had a tie against. So you, you go to the Azorius yeah, can't. No, not Senate can't. and you ask for books on how to Jamaica, break into prison. Jamaica. But that's our like, fourth, fourth um, string. That's they have a lot of books on how to run a prison, how to build a prison, how to make sure no one ever escapes from a prison. <laughs> Can I watch the show called Prison Break? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Maybe there's like stuff in the library that has like stories about this. There's a movie called No Escape about a prison. There are no heroic tales of people escaping from jail. Uh, Demir, in the, the Demir research on this kind of uh, key. <laughs> the yeah, the Demir would love this stuff. This is what they're all about. Lewis has criminal renown. He yes, has totally. he has a lot of criminal renown. Okay, you can go He's a pretty big deal. And you're also pretty well connected in the Thieves Guild. You could, you could ask around. I'll ask around. We'll both yeah. So the Thieves Guild, there are lots of stories of people breaking out of Revel's End. There's a lot of ways out of that prison. It's not nearly as secure as they lead you to believe. Those guards are commoners, right? Most of them have been doing that for a long time and are very susceptible to bribery. It might take some time, but there are lots of people who have bribed their way out of there. Additionally, the security inside the cell is very tight, but the security around the cell is, you know, if you can get out, they're anticipate that you'll just die in the cold, right? So if you can survive outside the prison for any amount of time, you'll be fine. They have a yard, right? They don't have great magical shielding, right? So there's lots of ways in and out of there that, you know, and you hear stories of people that are broken out. Yeah. I'll ask around two, and also ask well, around my prison for my character. Yeah. Uh, only at my character. So, so you get the same information he gets on on Revels. I don't know why it doesn't work. Um, you actually get more information that it is much more impenetrable than he did. A lot of that story might have been braggart stuff. From what you're hearing, like you meet a couple guys that were in there, and they're just like, "No, it's hell. It's very structured." They rotate guards constantly. There's no way to manipulate anything once you're in there. And you serve your time. It's just routine. I mean, it's just your time. Um, you do meet uh, someone who claims to have worked to get someone released legally through manipulation of the judge system that occurs there, which is very ancient. It appears that it was built, Revel's End is built on an ancient place of judgment, and they have some very strange, archaic laws that can be used for loopholes and stuff that aren't necessarily obvious. So there's moral flexibility within their judgment system. How long has she been in jail? 8 to 13? Uh, you don't know. Uh, do we know when she's scheduled to be out? Uh, can you get that information? So there are files. There in Revel's End, that have yeah, it, tremendous done. value. Done. So the warden is the fourth warden in like seven years, which is unusual. Wardens are generally wardens for life. There's been a lot of turnover lately, and there's a lot of um, belief that it's a lot of that turnover has been caused by people trying to get access to his files that he's been poisoned or killed or otherwise compromised. 
because agents are trying to get access to those prison files, no one really has access to them yet, but they are rumored to be worth a ton. I only met these guys today, so I'm just going to compliment her nails. Like, not pretending I can but in terms of uh, where is prison? Oh, you want to swap it out for? Like no one's really sure. I mean, she's kind of like a mystery wrapped inside of enigma type person. She's covered her tracks. Generally, her activity has remained. There hasn't been like a spike of activity or a lull in activity, right? She's been running things the way she normally has, and she's been running this thing for about fifteen years. That's how I asked one of the guys that said he was there. Yeah. Uh, and you believe him? Like how? Uh, much like it, as a guard, how much time do they get to talk to? Like, do they do guards ever talk to prisoners? So there's person? a yard. Ooh. So they walk them out to the yard, and they can talk there. And when you're on the yard, you can talk to these guys. Um, they rotate them though. The the thing about this prison is that like a guard is only on post for like 15 or 20 minutes. They're constantly moving from post to post to post, so it's hard to build a relationship with any one guard. And they have a lot of guards. They have a lot of guard turnover. A lot of these guards are really young, so they have some senior guards that kind of oversee the stuff, but in terms of like the food line, the mess hall, the yard, all that stuff, very young guards. Not trained, you know, they don't have a lot of weapons, they don't have a lot of suppression magic. The alarm system is mostly um, key invisibility, and um, they'll blast cones of cold to suppress riots and outbreaks. A breakout is a big deal, it doesn't happen that often, but a lot of the guys that go there just do it a ton. The water polo player for the graduates. I say we dress up as guards and go and guards us. I think guards is the way. Yeah, I think guards is the way. And visitors is weird. And most of us can't hide. <laughs> what if we forge the paperwork for a prisoner transfer? Okay. And then just got her out on like on transfer. So so the first thing you notice is when you mention forging a document in the Azorius Senate, like everyone just prickles immediately. <laughs> like there's no greater crime they could imagine than dreaming to forge I mean how how could you even mention that in the Azorius Senate? Yeah. It's it's unheard of. God told me to. Oh, yeah. This this is exactly what I was warning you about. This kind of behavior is ridiculous. Um, God is testing you. But yeah, there are prison transfers, right? Prisoners do get moved in and out of Revel's End. Wait, what do we do with that? No, hold on. If she says powerful, it's like if she's fucking Pablo Escobar's her bitch. But she wouldn't know. You were going with that. I don't know if I was rolling tape when that happened. I might have missed it. Pablo Escobar's. Yeah, right. Pablo Escobar's. That's got to be the. Pablo Escobar's. 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 Pablo if she's big enough to make Pablo Escobar her bitch, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like, like, like facts, facts. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but, right. If I'm saying that she probably already, she can control her prison. She is the prison. She is rebel's she is end. So she will know. When she is the captain now. So you don't think that's true. So uh, Revels End is a legit so prison. Is you don't think she's running things there? I think out she's what been cut off. So that she'll give over the key. I'm I'm trying to debate though. There is additional information on the key. You brought up the key while you were talking to the clan. Well, I'm I'm wondering if I should just go talk to her as a guest first, just to fill it out. But then if they might recognize me if I try to sneak in as a guard after that. So it's pop in with uh, one of those mustache nose glass things. Yeah. Prisoner thirteen must have the vault key or know where it is. But every magical method clan axe breaker has tried to locate the key has failed. Baron presumes Prisoner 13 would give up the key only in exchange for freedom, but if the characters find the key or convince her to give it up in any other way, he'll be just as pleased. Clan Axebreak tried to arrange for her release, but the Absolution Council of Rebels End denied the request. What did she do? They don't know. We need to poison her so she can get out of medical. Okay, so you know, in your kind of talking about, they do have a fairly large, they have elderly prisoners there, so they have a hospital wing. The hospital wing does have clergy on staff, um, and it is a very low security um, area, mostly tending to elderly prisoners. How about how about this? We 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 find a way to poison her. They get her to the medical staff. I come and see her as a pastor, and I t I come in with an antidote, and I tell her if she doesn't tell us where the key is, she doesn't get the antidote. 
like trying to hold right. this car. Like, no, I think that's a gonna possibility. Like, it's going to explode. I'm and just concerned that, that we would, like, I mean, she's been in there for running, running prisons. Did you make that up? You made that up? She's been, Prisoner 13 has been running prisoners, prisons for about 15, maybe longer. I'm just nervous we would blow she, We think that she's been in there for like less than around three years. I like that idea, but instead of, we give her like a poison that doesn't kill her or knocks her out. So then we just bring her like. I a slow working po poison, so we have time to negotiate. I don't know. I actually about. No, I'm talking about negotiating beforehand. So she's she in on the poisoning. How about like, um, what do you call that? Uh, what's that movie? Incep Inception. <laughs> Should give her a poison where you can. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's rolling a dice. No, Inception. It is. So we're Inception. Oh, that's right. oh, so like, she thinks she's giving. She thinks she's like opening up her safe, but she's really giving us the key. Nice. So Inception. Right? So it's deception. But we got to go three levels down. And we need architects for each level. <laughs> they can think that it was their idea. It's got to be her idea. Was it only three levels? So should I go talk to her and see if she's even willing to deal? But that might have lot raise her. Maybe. I think we shouldn't go straight with the poison round. No, I'm talking about. It like sounds like Quinn and Axbrick. They've already petitioned to get her released, mm -hmm. and they've. It sounds like they've also visited, right? Because they know about the visiting protocol and stuff. So it sounds like they've already gone and talked. Yeah, but I know who she really is. Okay. And I can use that as a pitch to try to be like, I can get you back to doing what you're doing. I will break you out if you give me the key, and I will help you get back to where you can control. Because where you're at right now, you're just another prisoner. They don't respect you for what you are. And I'll say her real name, Cordelia or whatever, and see if that frazzles her. But I'll do it in, I want to do it in disguise in case it doesn't work or we got to come back as guards. I'm not showing up with the same oh, yeah. face. Yeah, that, that would work. I'm, I'm with that plan. Hat of disguise? Did you get the hat of disguise? There's a hat of disguise. We have oh, finished our... Uh, yeah, you could have... You could have just... Yet. You could have pre-purchased that one. The hat of disguise. It's classic. Well, we, when we need a backup plan, because there's no left surefire here. way that that would work. Like that well, if she's not with it, we'll have to... Yeah, we'll have to have a backup plan. Alright, then what's our backup plan then? Because I like that as a, as a plan. Anyway. Let's ask her what she wants. Yeah, exactly. The first plan is me going there and ask her what she wants. Uh, backup plan. If she's like super stout on not... Give then the key, no matter what. we go then, in yeah. as guards and we uh, threaten to kill her. All right. Then we go to your plan. We'll try to make it work peacefully. Well, we well, his plan is poison her, get her moved down into the hospital, yeah. and then deal with her in the hospital. So I could try to poison her right then and there. Right, slide yeah. a hand, if, stab if she her. completely or refuses to poison her, I'll come in as a pastor. Yeah. And yeah. We can try that. Okay, so in the movie there was like chains and shit, right? Like holding the building up. I don't remember the building. There was change. There's a huge elevator that goes from the docks up to the kind of like loading area to the prison. Yeah. And then there's a complex series of rooms that are used to get prisoners in safely. And then they're moved chained from that area to their cells. And they are chained the entire time they're there. All right. I'm just trying to remember what I saw in the movie. So I guess I'll disguise myself and then go see her. Okay. So we're going to go from Ravnica back to the Forgotten Realms. We're going to get on a boat. We're going to go two days north on the boat to the prison. Okay. How do you guys want to do that? That's turf. So it's been three days since we he got his egg. Drink one, find out. You have an egg. It's been one day. day egg time is one. Uh, the, the, you said the what he quote was low. Uh, the doctor's area with low security. Why don't we just go in his physicians, doing uh, checkups and all the and all the. It's only going to take you three hours, so I'll, I'll, I'll we don't know where we're doing. Scalpel. Stats. <laughs> EKG. Doogie Hauser. This one looks perfectly healthy. Yeah. <laughs> Too healthy for having been in prison for 13 years. Something's going on. He's a witch! On. Kill him! <laughs> There's some sort of nefarious... Witch! He's a zombie! I also don't think they need... How many doctors? Headshot. Uh, uh, so, I don't know. Doctor? Just the easiest way. To, how close can they teleport us? So, so class, Clan Axby can get you from the Azorius Center through this portal yeah. to a dock yeah. where you can get on the... Jolly Pelican yep. and sail two days north 
to the prison. How much does it cost to get on the Jolly Pelican? So they can get you on the Jolly Pelican as prison guards. Okay. They can get you on the Jolly Pelican in boxes. Okay. Or that's probably pretty much it. Nothing else goes to the prison. We'll do prison guard first, and then I'll just change into my disguise. He's tiny, or he's a he's a small cat. I'll be a chef. Okay, so you're a cook. I'll be a guard, but also when I go to visitor. How would I visit her then? You said it allows visitors. Why would I? Why can't I just say I want to be a visitor? You you can you can get on the boat as a visitor. I'll do that. Okay. For this time, but remember, I'm in disguise right now as a visitor. But I also have a uh, guard uniform as backup if that don't work. Okay. Or underneath my clothes, so I can do a Superman style. I'm a guard. Okay. And then take off my Brian my janitor. <laughs> You're going in as a janitor. Or D. Louser. D. Louser. Yeah, D. Louser. What's a D. Louser? He throws the white stuff on him. And the Have you seen yeah, Shawshank <laughs> Shows the shoves the stuff. Might burn your eyes from Shawshank Redemption. D. Lousers. Yeah. You haven't seen Shawshank Redemption? No. You haven't seen I believe it's not a good movie. Parenting fit. Come on. I've never seen it. Oh, you've never it's seen like it? Top ten all time, right? I mean, it's. Oh, okay. I don't like He's watching sad movies. I watch movies to be happy. Was stupid. Okay. No, I mean, the movie like, is the rest good. of the movie was amazing. I was, I mean, it was really good, right? I mean, it's, it's, it was really, really good, but the I, escape I route you. was completely <laughs> uncreated. It was, it was shitty, kind of wasn't it? It was. He just, <laughs> no, that, I'm not going to spoil when that movie came out. That go was ahead, crazy. I'm never going to watch it. It was, it was a good at movie. Time, at the time when it came out, it was not really a popular escape route. Okay. More Paladins never heard anything. But I mean, see, it hasn't today. stand the test of time, yeah, but yeah. But that's, I think it's digging, digging through the, yeah. You need to see it. The genius way, whether it was high. I mean, I think it's like Godfather. I mean, I think it's like top ten all the. Yeah, I get that. I just don't care. You don't care. No. The genius thing was the way that he hid the hammer. You haven't seen it. I got it though. Is it? It's not a prison heist movie, but it's similar. They break out. It didn't make crazy amounts of money. It made three times the amount of its budget. And. Yeah, I mean, the reception was good, though. Positive. I mean, the, the, now in, like, books about script writing, step one is re watch The Godfather. Godfather's the number one script. Funny. Who, who wrote The Godfather again? Mario Scorsese. Puzo. Okay. No, Scorsese and Puzo did the screenplay. Puzo wrote the book. So he asked who wrote the uh, who, would, who wrote the book and adapted it into a script? Puzo wrote the book, but Puzo and Scorsese... Or no, Cap, Capra. Capra wrote it as screenplay. Okay, I think it was Capra that... It, it was... I think Coppola. It was Francis movie. Coppola. Coppola. Make up your mind! Ford, 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 no, I'm, I'm, we're going a long way to get to this story, man. So it's okay, just, so he, 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 wrote, he wrote the book. He, he wrote the screenplay. Puzo wrote the whoever, book. Whoever it was... And then Coppola and, and Puzo he, wrote the movie. The movie came out, it did really good, did amazing. And then he, the whole thing was he never, he never had any experience screenwriting. He didn't read a book or anything. So afterwards, he bought a book on how to do screenwriting. And the first, as soon as he opened the book, the first thing it told him to do was watch The Godfather, the movie that he made. I believe it. Yeah. I believe There's it. a movie out there, or a TV show on Paramount, with Miles Teller playing the producer. And it's a really good making of The Godfather. How do you want to get to the prison? As a He's guard. going as a janitor. You're I going. So I'm going to change. Can I be? Can I be a dirty like a, that can naughty nurse? Uh -huh. <laughs> Julie's going in as the nurse. Yeah, I be a, be a maid or something. Brock, how are we getting into the prison? Top card is confused. I may, like, a, I check uh, lock integrity. Like I'm a no, no, no. Technician. Security consultant? Security consultant. Okay. Yeah. Security. So, my question is. Pastor. Pastor. Okay. So, you go through the portal. You come out in the frozen north of the Forgotten Realms. It's a blizzard. It's snowing. It's horrible. You are um, come out in a tavern that faces a dock out into the... For, or what is it? The Sea of Lost Ice or whatever it's called? The I mean, it's hell. Like Chunks of ice floating in the ocean and you're seeing a boat come up to this dock, you're going to get on this thing and head north. I would just like to say, Lewis, make sure it's a slow, slow, and very painful poison. Who has a poison? Just in case. That's our black backup plan. I guess we'd have to. Guys buy a poison? I guess we'd have to. You need to buy a poison. Before we left. Where are we getting the poison? Should we check the bag? So we could have bought it. I told you I wanted to go shopping. <laughs> 
And while you were there, you bought a slow-acting poison. I bought all kinds of stuff. You wouldn't believe the stuff that I bought. Shop you used to go home mad at the prices I got them for, too. It's incredible. It was one <laughs> copper for this deadly poison. Okay. It's going out of business sale. Because <laughs> he accidentally took the poison. Uh, <laughs> this is like a purple worm or something? I don't know. Okay. Trek to the prison. Uh, yep. D20. Everybody? No. D20. 17. Cool. 17. D20. Okay, as you are sailing along, there is a large area in the ice covered sea that has no ice over it. And it looks like something boiling in the water right there. Your boat is going near it, but not towards it. You could investigate if you chose to. Why would I do something dumb like that? You're an adventurer. <laughs> I'm not a dumb adventurer. Uh, maybe this is the sewer coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, would you like to do a uh, sanitation check? <laughs> is that wisdom? Yes. <laughs> Inside or perception? No. <laughs> Uh, 20. Yeah. Brian, uh, that's actually 22. Yeah, you think that this may be the sewage vent for the prison, which is mythical. Like you, like you've heard rumor of this. No one's ever found it. It was thought that they were doing something weird, like magical, with the sewage from the prison. But it appears that you may have just discovered. What kind of magical sewage. stuff are they doing with the sewage? You know, like bag of holding. <laughs> For shit, like jumping. <laughs> Damn. Look. Okay. So you I, found it. It's right here. You can see the cliffs where the prison is. You're approaching the cliffs. You're about two kilometers away from the prison. So this pipe does lead pretty far out to the sea. We could literally get in there, maybe. Okay. Why though? We'll be A reverse in Shawshank. <laughs> I'm good with Shanksha. I'm good with my original plan. Okay. I'm not getting in shit. Yeah, I'm not going for shit. Are we almost done with the book, Dave? You're on adventure four. No, your notebook. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're closing in. I'm so excited. Can't wait to finish this thing. But yeah, this year here. Oh, we got a lot. We got we're, a lot. we're supposed to do two adventure every two weeks. We're, we're Is not the whole thing in notebook. Yeah. I thought it was just like the last twenty pages or something. All Is that them. all been on this one adventure? <laughs> no. 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 When did you start it? How long? Uh, let's see if I have a date. Nine one nineteen. Oh wow. Gateway. Four years. Gateway right. twenty nineteen. Yeah. Is there a COVID page? What what what, what, what is March? I want to see what the COVID page. March nineteen. March twenty. That's just crazy. There's Manfredo. Remember when Manfredo I remember came when back? <laughs> I think we'll stop here though. We're at the prison. Right. So next Wait, week we're at the we're at the toilet. No, no, you've sailed past the toilet. You identified oh. this, so oh. you want to stay oh, there. Oh, dude, way out. Yeah, maybe. You, know, you guys can stay. You guys. Just FYI, I do have feather fall. Did you also get any kind of like underwater oceanic exploration <laughs> tool? No, <I> <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to. Swim Cats don't crap. like water. You're not yeah. trying to do crap. Not throwing some crap. We need to organize another outing, guys. I enjoyed going to the D&D movie. We need to do something like that again. This I, think baseball, I think a baseball, I think a cheap baseball game. game. You're I'm going to do this while I'm away. Where are you going? I'll be in Toronto. How long? For how long? Four weeks. So we tried doing hybrid for a while. It didn't go well. What if it was just like a FaceTime? Yeah. You want to try to just put we can a FaceTime you and like prop you up? Yeah, I'm just, just like, right there. You're right here. Like, it's worth a try. It's worth it'll happen. It'll fail miserably. <laughs> no, that's exactly it. I have a mount. <laughs> just try it. It'll fail. I mean, we get, worst case it fails. Like, yeah. I'm I'm in favor of the fail. I mean, I'm feeling if it works, it'd be great. Well, in fact, then all of you could just have. What failed about it was um, was it just not being heard? No, the the yes, Discord was player was annoying. Huh. Like he didn't realize that there were other people here, so he would start talking on Discord, and we'd get tired of listening to him, and then just start talking over him, and then we, he would get frustrated that we weren't listening to his great plan. Kind of like what happens when we're here face to face. So Brian, let me get you. Talk to have your information. We've been texting. I'm surprised you didn't start a dictatorship. I was hoping you were going to start. No one's on board with it. Your dictatorship. Everybody was on board with it, but me and him. 
Yeah. So you're not gonna you're gonna be able to go next week, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.